Hi, I'm Alan Ross, and this is another EPRA EPRA Take 5. Uh, my guest today is a dear friend, someone that uh, he and I invented th this whole reliability approach for critical electrical systems. Um, we started this journey, uh, three of us, and we started with transformers. Chip is probably uh, one of, if not the, most informed transformer reliability expert. Uh, he's seen a lot of uh, unreliability and you've seen a lot of problems out there. But Chip, uh, what I wanna do is, uh, you know, we've worked really hard on developing this corporate reliability program that you're out sharing with people like Dom Tar and people like Westrock, a lot of people in the paper uh, refining metals processing, mining, I could, I could just go on and on, data centers. But um, one of the things that we found is how difficult it is for a company to be able to adopt it. You've been able to develop a program, a programmatic way for doing it for transformers, okay? So many of these corporate people that we're talking about are members of EPRA, but it was a long, hard road that we traveled together to get here. Why do you think uh, most companies have such a hard time developing a critical electrical system reliability program? And how can you help them understand the importance of that? Hey, well, thanks for having me on, Alan. I, I appreciate it. It's, it's good to see you. Good to see you, even, even virtually, you know? Yeah, we have, yeah. You have an elbowed, uh, elbowed high, there you go. <laughs> <I like it. laughs> a virtual elbow. Yeah. So yeah, the, and yeah, we, we've traveled on this journey together for a long time. And uh, again, thanks for having me on. In talking with a lot of the industrial guys, there's several items that I'd like to point out that just these are things that keep reoccurring as to why people don't put together a reliability program. Number one is they don't put it in their CMMS system. They don't have a CMMS system for their electrical system. So yeah. when, it comes, when it comes to maintenance and everything, it's, it's overlooked. Um, the second thing that I find is most of the engineers in the industrial world, they focus 90% of their efforts on the mechanical systems inside a plant, which is rotors, um, uh, brakes, all those industrial, all the manufacturing parts, but they fail to realize that the electrical system itself, if that goes down, nothing else works. Yeah. Um, the third biggie that I think is one of the biggest is organizational barriers. Um, getting leadership to buy into um, an electrical system reliability plan. Now today it's more robust. More people are becoming aware of the need for that. So I think those are probably the three biggest items uh, as to why people don't start their reliability journey. They all three, the one, it's interesting. So if you, even if you put uh, your electrical system in the CMMS, and some people do, they put the assets in there, but they don't put testing protocols, maintenance protocols. Right. But here's the other thing is too many times reliability as a whole, as a discipline falls under the maintenance. Uh, I'm a certified maintenance and reliability professional. Yes. No, I'm not. I could care less about maintenance. It's a cost center. Everybody wants to cut costs. Right. I'd rather be a certified reliability professional and at EPRA we're working on certified electrical reliability professional, but it, it's sometimes because we get, even if we go in the CMMS, we're buried under maintenance. And I think that last one, this cultural barrier um, that you've got, and it requires somebody above the rest. It requires a leader, a self a non self-serving leader that says, Hey, I can sell this to corporate and I can sell it to all of the different plants because operations has got to buy into it, right? You, you, can, you can get operations at, at any one of the plants say, no, 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 we, we handle all that here. Yeah. And then you're trying to put together this team. Um, that, those are, those are three good areas. So in the one, how do you change culture? How have you gone about helping people change the culture to develop a corporate electrical reliability program? Boy, there's many way, angles that you can hit that, Alan. Um, number one is you, you, you have to uh, pick a team member from each area, from procurement, from engineering, and you also have to get corporate leadership support. 
if, if you don't have the president, the VP, the VP of operations, and everybody on board with that program, a reliability program is just not gonna work. Um, they also have to understand the consequences of a do nothing reliability plan, which is, believe it or not, 70% of the industrial companies out there, uh, that's, that's a plan that they do. They don't do anything. Um, and, and, and provide leadership, and you need one leader within that company that's going to take a stand and say, I'm going to start a reliability program. Who's going to come on that journey with me? And then work with the transformer guys uh, like SD Myers and other companies and EPRAs to help put that program together that they can start bonding all of those departments together and get by it. It's interesting that you say that. Um, we're, these live for a long take fives, but one of the things I was working on this morning with some of our members like Megger and Iris and SDT is an accreditation program. Where yeah. we can put together, here's what an accredited electric, critical electric power reliability program looks like. And um, that's going to be something that at EPRA we advance rapidly this year. So people have a path to follow. And then they can, if they can do it at the site level, and if you get a nice, enough site levels following it, then you can say, why aren't we mandating this at the corporate level? So uh, good job. You've worked it. You've got a lot of people that are engaged and involved. Most of the people that you've worked with were some of the founding members of EPRA. So thank Absolutely. you for that. This has been a take five with uh, one of my friends and one of uh, uh, the great advocates for electrical power reliability in the industrial commercial grid edge world. And that's Chip Angus. Chip, thank you. And as a fellow Scotsman, what I can say to you is well done, lad. Well done. <laughs> thank you, Alan. It's been a pleasure. Okay, I tried to get him to use his Scottish accent, but uh, he's I'm not going to let him go there. All right, Chip, we'll do this again, and we'll do it often, but thanks for joining, and thank you for your support for EPRA. Thank you, Alan.